Hello everybody, this is Tiny Rail Fan Productions, and welcome back to the engines of the Long Island Railroad. In today's episode, we will cover the LIRR's most famous steam locomotive, the G5S. By the 1920s, the Pennsylvania Railroad needed a dedicated commuter locomotive to work the Penzi's numerous non-electrified branches, where the current MP54 EMUs couldn't go. The new locomotive would be designed with no trailing truck to increase acceleration and power. A boiler similar to that of the Penzi's already successful E6 Atlantic would be used to provide enough steam for such a small engine. The result was the G5S the largest and most modern 460 ever built. The Penzi had a unique system of classifying their locomotives. The G for the G5 stood for the 460 wheel arrangement, and the 5 meant this is the fifth variation of a Penzi 10 wheeler. Finally, the lowercase s stood for a superheater, which boosted steam capacity without having to burn more fuel. Construction of the G started in 1924, with a total of 121 locomotives built 90 for the Penzi and 31 for the Long Island. They weighed in at 237,000 pounds, and with their 205 pounds of steam pressure, they could output 41,330 pounds of tractive effort at about 70 miles an hour. All locomotives had a Pennsylvania or Luckenheimer three chime steam whistle. In fact, Engine 39's original whistle has been preserved and has seen steam on the Strasburg Railroad in Lancaster, PA. Here are a few examples. Now we a smaller subsidiary of the PRR, the LIRR had less G5s than the Penzi. But while the PRR used their Gs in local or maintenance of way service, the Long Island G5s were hard at work, pulling various commuter and express trains from Jamaica to all parts of the island. It was not uncommon for a G5 to be paired with a set of 3 to 8 ping pong B54 commuter cars. Crews, for the most part, liked running the G5s, aside from their riding qualities being sacrificed for power, as quoted by Penzi Rail fan Al Stauffer, the Gs were reliable, good steamers. Their ubiquity ultimately led to their 30-year-long career. But as with any railroad in the 1950s, the G5's days were numbered. As new Alco RS3s and H16-44s from Fairbanks Morse, started to arrive on the property, the G5s were slowly retired. In October of 1955, G5s number 35 and 39 met pilot to pilot in Hicksville, New York as part of a farewell railfan excursion. At the end of the ceremony, their RS3 successors towed them away and their fires were dropped for the final time. The age of steam on Long Island had come to an end. Fortunately, Two out of the original 31 LIRR G5s, 35 and 39, were preserved. 35 is now awaiting restoration at the Oyster Bay Railroad Museum in Oyster Bay, New York. Number 39 is currently being restored thanks to a joint effort by the locomotive's owner, the Railroad Museum of Long Island, and the Strasburg Railroad in Lancaster, PA. A campaign was made to support the project, with everything from custom boxcars to even letting uh, Engine 475 wear 39's whistle for a while. And speaking of Strasburg, nearby in the Railroad Museum of PA, there is yet another G5, Pennsylvania 5741, which sits cosmetically restored inside the museum's car bar. The G5s were a game changer for the Allied of boosting railroad efficiency to new levels. 
To their credit, they were as synonymous to Long Island as Robert Moses and the sunny East End beaches. There is no doubt in any rail fan's mind that the G5s were an essential part of the engines of the Long Island Railroad. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you'd like to see more Engines of Long Island and other videos, be sure to like and subscribe to Tiny Rail Fan Productions. Also, special thanks to all the following people for letting me use their clips and photos in this video. And stay tuned for Episode 3, where dieselization will begin with the Alco RS and S series. <laughs>